Welcome, everybody, to the second episode of The Ways of the Force. I am your host, Jake the Wookiee, and along me today, uh, we have a couple newcomers and uh, two people from last week. Uh, to my right, we have my wife, BB Brittany. We've got, returning from last week, Logie One Kenobi. To my left, intro <laughs> introduced on the show, is uh, Zwayan. Zach W. You can just call me that. Zach W. That's much easier. Yeah, the reason I told you that is because it's Zach Will W. is a nerd. Okay. I almost okay. said my actual last name. I don't want you to know who I am. Wait, who's a nerd? And then we got <laughs> Kyle, uh, not so many daddy issues, Ren, or no daddy issues, yeah, Ren. That one, that one, that one. Okay. Are you emo, though? No. That's why I know. Flip your it's hair. no daddy issues. It doesn't move. Yeah, you're right. Really. It's not there. No. Yeah. No. He has no daddy issues. No daddy issues. So basically... Uh, what do you do when you're frustrated? Do you hit things? I do not. Oh, well then, yeah. They're pretty good. No, good. So basically... Count to ten, yeah. This is the show. You all guessed it. Star Wars. Everything Star Wars. So uh, we'll start this off with the uh, biggest topic of the week, which is actually... Episode 8 has uh, been delayed. It has gone from uh, being released in May 2017 to uh, December 2017. And uh, according to things I've read, there's a few different reasons why uh, this has happened. Uh, the first thing is obviously the money thing. Uh, it did really well uh, releasing in December. And uh, so they want to get all that December profits again. And the second thing I've heard is actually uh, they're doing a couple small rewrites on the script. Uh, they basically wanted to uh, wait for the reaction to The Force Awakens. And uh, there are a couple new characters that they're introducing, but they're actually going to um, go back and not have them as significant in the story and like basically make the roles for Poe Dameron and Finn much larger in the story since like the reaction to their characters were so uh, good. So, uh, question. Yes. What do you think about this, Zach? Where did you find that out? The only article I saw in it was is delayed a few months. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Well, ba basically, Star Wars did the official press release talking about um, how they want to uh, do December as like kind of the new Star Wars month. But then the according to MakingStarWars.net. That's the article I was reading about kind of the casting stuff, and they actually get a lot of inside scoops about uh, different Star Wars related stuff. But, but is it really that big of a bummer? I mean, like, we're getting a Star Wars movie every year now in yeah. December. It's just like a Star Wars Christmas every Christmas. Yeah. That's what I think. It's kind of becoming this December thing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be revolving around Christmas, time you be with your family, you go see Star Wars. You go see three times. That cat. We also have Finn, the cat, joining us today. I forgot to introduce Sam. So he's just going to cause gotta, mayhem gotta, the, whole show. the whole show. Yeah, time. you got to watch out for that I'm one. I'm going to get really creative with my hands during this podcast. <laughs> so. Can I put in a on uh, December Star Wars? Yeah. I think we should start calling it Star Kwanzaa. <laughs> Star Kwanzaa. Star Kwanzaa. <laughs> Star Kwanzaa. Not Star Kwanzaa. It doesn't work as well. Star, Star not Kwanzaa. Star Wars. -ica. That sounds too much like a... <laughs> About it, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think we can get too upset. We get Star Wars every uh, Star Wars movie every year, every yeah. December, yeah, as opposed to like before when it was three years apart. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, both those go. Well, uh, I also heard about a couple other things. You know, as far as not having to compete with pirates, what six? Now, yeah, because they basically be moved that. The same, and yeah. Avatar, and it's slot. Avatar got pushed back. Uh, out of its December release, so, mm -hmm. it, you know, kind of lowering the competition as well. And I also heard <laughs> that a cat attack is <laughs> <crutch. laughs> This is going to be dangerous. Um, <laughs> also yeah, heard that uh, as, as far as the new characters and whatnot, that the, uh, the whole traitor thing, they were taking some time to rewrite. Mm -hmm. Just a rumor, but... That's that's out there as well mm -hmm. to give him a little bit more of a backstory. <laughs> oh, the the guy who who fights Finn. Uh, yeah. Yep, capitalizing on all the mm -hmm. internet. Come here. What do you think about it, BB Brittany? Well, I'm kind of because you said that um, 
they're basically making other characters' roles smaller that they were going to introduce into the movie. Correct? Yeah. And so I'm like a little disappointed in that, just to see like what they would have done in you know what originally they had planned. But I mean, I guess it's good to give Poe Dameron a larger character, more screen time, especially like he didn't really get a lot of screen time outside of flying. From what I heard, he was supposed to die. And yeah. And that really? was the rumor, yeah. They, they kind of nixed that. And I also read a rumor that he... I would have been more bummed if, if Poe died, I think. Oh, yeah. I, I read a rumor that he might be homosexual. You guys read yeah. that? Yeah, with yes. the... Uh, with I don't know where this came from. Yeah, apparently both the actors said that they sampled from romance on, uh, I think, Ellen or something? And uh, that was like the when they were doing their scenes together, which you can kind of see almost that connection, but at the same time... If I was escaping somewhere with my life with someone else, you're gonna feel like a connection with that person. I don't know if it was would necessarily be romantic. But you'd be like, God, I would fuck someone to get off <laughs> of this star station. I don't know. Can we swear on this show? Yeah. Okay. Well, I did. Yeah. Broke us in for this episode. Yeah, yeah. We're at, <laughs> at one on the count. I think that's that's where the Wookiee sound comes in. <laughs> I would murder <laughs> someone. We had Gazi last week. Come on. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> There's, there was yeah. a definite bromance, though, between us two, that's for sure. Whether it'll go past that. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of prison break buddies. Uh, it's Disney. Yeah, right? Yeah. I don't think yeah. we'll go that oh. far. Well, Tumblr says otherwise. They have a whole bunch of Tumblr drawings says of up. Finn and Poe Dameron together. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Tumblr ships everything, though. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Get a little X-rated. Yeah, they do some weird stuff. <laughs> and, like, the other thing, too, is... Episode 8 was only going to be released five months after Rogue One. Like, that kind of almost would steal Rogue One's thunder a little bit. It kind of gives it a little more room to breathe. I'm fine with December. So, and I think it'll be good. They have more time to perfect it. need more time to, yeah. to write a better script or do whatever they need to to get the best movie out there. Yeah. I think it's good stuff. Well, Definitely. Hopefully a movie every year, right? Yeah, movie every year. I mean, the people who are going to complain about it being oversaturated are probably not going to be in this room right now. <laughs> yeah, this is a podcast about Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. We but gathered on a Friday night to talk about Star Wars. We're pretty pumped about it. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I can totally see the point of the other side of it, though, getting a little bit worn out on a Star Wars movie every year, and I think their ticket sales are going to be down for Rogue One, no doubt. Yeah. Um, I don't think any of the spinoffs will have what the trilogy movies are. No, have. and I, I think that it's going to be hard to get people in the seats and then to do another spin-off movie, if they don't get do well next December, it's going to be hard to justify good production quality on the mm-hmm. other ones. Yeah. What are we at right now? Blood, man. Blood I'll pop you in, buddy. <laughs> what are we at right now? $900 million in the United States and $1.7 billion yeah. total? It's basically, it's going to eclipse Titanic, but... Probably not it's not going to reach Avatar because that was on a whole nother level of that's, money. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, and it's I read a thing that it's not doing quite as well in China as they thought it was going to. Yeah. But you said originally it was projected to be like to beat Avatar. Yeah, because it hit all of these records yeah. so fast compared to any mm-hmm. other movie in history. But basically, Avatar was in theaters for like almost an entire year. Yeah. Where really? Yeah, The Force Awakens, they're that. already slating for it to be released on digital and Blu-ray in April, so it's going to be I was I was much in, I was in Russia when Avatar came out. And it was yeah, it was in mm. theaters for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, basically, uh, we'll go on to our next topic, which is the first spin-off movie of Star Wars coming out in December, Rogue One. Uh, there's not a lot to know about it. Um, just basically the basic plot of uh, getting a bunch of rebels to steal the Death Star plans. Um, there's few actors in it, uh, like martial arts superstar Donnie Yen is in it. He's the <coughs> man. I'm a fan of Donnie yeah. Yen. They have a picture basically of the rebels together, and that's the only thing they have. And uh, it's rumored that Darth Vader may appear in this movie as well. Forrest Whitaker is also in it, isn't it? Yeah. So. I had heard that there was going to be no force anything. Yeah. Nothing. Because now there's because now the uh, like some sources on the internet say they're making an exact replica of Darth Vader's uh, costume from the original Star Wars movie. So they're getting it down to a T. Because it would make sense if you're going to steal the 
Plans from the Death Star, of course, Darth Vader's going to show it's up. He's got to make some cameos. Yeah. Choke a few people out. Mm-hmm. So? Throw a couple of his own tantrums. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I don't think Vader will. <laughs> well, I'll get composed that be, for that. I, th- no. I think it'd be cool if there's actually a scene where... Because Vader's suit, if you ever look at the cool stuff about the specs, he's got, like, the magnetic shoes to get onto the hulls of uh, the ships outside. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see that. That'd be cool. See him just standing at the end of a ship, you know, mm-hmm. slice down star pilot as he's going by, you know, just doing Vader stuff. Being actually a uh, omnipotent destroyer of things, <laughs> like we picture him as. Mm-hmm. And now uh, you mentioned that the photo being the only thing, and um, I've seen a few of the crazy theories out there from fans that uh, the photos resemble the the Knights of Ren in the flashback from episode 7. Some people are saying that Rogue One being a lead-in to the Knights of of Ren. But do you think they would be way too old though? Because basically this movie is supposed to be before the original (laughs) Star Wars, so they would have to be real old. Aren't they old and trying to do Jedi training and go evil? Isn't that, like, what happens all the time when you're old? Well, <laughs> Even Luke goes evil for kind of a split second? Yeah. That and we don't know when that, you know, the, the Force vision. Man, that thing is just Lunchbox deadly. down. That thing is deadly. That's gonna Lunchbox work. down. That's going to come down in every episode. Yeah. That fall. <laughs> it was, uh, you didn't catch it like that, you did. Right. <laughs> So, uh, no overall, like, are you guys excited for Rogue, Rogue One? Well, this is the first time when that I really looked into it. And some of the mm-hmm. characters, like Mads Mikkelsen, yeah, he like, like, was like the chief from Casino Royale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although they don't really know what he's gonna do, I read a theory that he might be the engineer of the Death Star. He also might be Felicity Jones' father, and she's mm-hmm. one of the rebels. And so he like turns because he wants to help out his daughter I don't know I yeah. thought that was interesting but I think it, it'll be it'll be a much different feeling Star Wars movie than we've had to this point I think it'll feel more kind of like a war movie yeah. Yeah. reading some of the people who will be involved and some of the more mm-hmm. back you know like the, the costumes the, I think the guy who did the costumes worked on Saving Private Ryan yeah there's someone who did lighting they worked on Zero Dark Thirty so I think it's going to be like a feel more, much more like a war movie yeah, I'll be excited. Yeah. I, I mean, especially since, you know, there's no Jedis. Yeah. I think that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Cause, and, like, out of, like, a general audience, though, do you think people are going to show up for Rogue, Re- Rogue One and be real confused when they're like, where is Rey? <laughs> <laughs> what movie is this? Are they going to be confused by the spinoff movies yeah. at all, do you think? Um, it'll do better than an animated movie where it was really two episodes of a television show that they were starting off having the Star Wars title and being put into theaters. Oh, the Clone Wars? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I trust like the Disney marketing machine. Yeah, to, like, I, I mean, they've got yeah. plenty of time to really differentiate this. Mm-hmm. I think it, I think it'll be okay. The thing about it that's difficult for me is because when they t- said spinoff movies, they didn't say Rogue One at first. They said they're they're considering spinoffs about maybe character focus. Mm-hmm. The instant th- 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 that they said that went into my mind. Give me a goddamn Boba Fett movie. <laughs> movie starts out with you know crawl and then down Starlight Pit. Hand comes out, pulls himself out. Movie from there. That's all I wanted. And this isn't that. So I'm still happy because I'm getting a Star Wars movie, but it's not the movie I wanted instantly after hearing that they were doing spinoffs. My question is, movie starts up, are we going to see, like, Galaxy Far, Far Away, Star Wars, there's the rolling up, or, like, what do we think? Yeah. Is yeah. it going to, going to be completely different? Yeah. That's the question. Because then the music may be different, too, because I don't think John Williams is going to score it. They're going to do the blue letters, and they're going to crawl. Oh, yeah. Let's be honest That's to ourselves. Yeah. I just, Every, I'm just wondering, like, how much everything. are they going to differentiate this from what we've seen? I think marketing is where they're going to differentiate it. Uh, I think it's going to be more advertising than they had to do for The Force Awakens. Because you won't have the hype that you had before, so you kind of have to compensate. But they won't go episode one on it where they're like, look at all these awesome new characters, you're going to love them. Mm -hmm. It'll be like, there's going to be explosions, there's going to be X-Wings, there's going to be probably Death Star plans. 
Yeah. And I think that's probably the best thing about it is, you know, have to have that pressure of keeping up the Star Wars, you know, pissing those people off, but you still get to see the X Wings and the right. fights yeah. and the You didn't it's you not know. like knowing about pod racing before seeing the movie, like seeing the pictures of Anakin and the goggles going, Okay, maybe this will be cool and then being like, Oh, that's forty minutes of the movie. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Watching NASCAR. <laughs> hey. <laughs> We're in Nebraska. There's a statistical likelihood that one of us likes NASCAR, and that's I was, me. I didn't. I wasn't knocking it. You don't Since know we're at a Star Wars pod, you probably, probably not. not. You don't know if I like in pod race. the Midwest. <laughs> I liked it as a child. I had a Jeff Gordon poster. I don't. I don't follow it by any means. But Daytona 500. That's a good, good beer <laughs> drinking watching time. Just I tell you what, Jeff Gordon got behind a pod racer. I'd tune in. <laughs> <laughs> you like the racer that no one likes? No, I'm kidding. I just don't like him. All right. Moving on from unrelated <laughs> from NASCAR. In- <laughs> insert NASCAR name. Behind the pod racer, I tune in. Jeff Gordon's like the only name yeah, I Yeah, I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised Star Wars didn't put their name on a NASCAR car. Oh, they could have done a cool vehicle wrap? Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised they did, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Giving it sound effects. Disney marketing machine. Yeah. That's, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be Star Wars Rogue One on Jimmy Johnson's R- car. Brought to you by Pepsi. <laughs> what is he, number 48? Anyway, yeah. what are we talking All about? All right, moving on from that, we'll lead on to actually the next spinoff movie um, that's going to take place after episode eight, which is the Han Solo movie. You sure it's not a Boba Fett movie? That's possibly <laughs> the third, the third, third, third spinoff movie. Because um, basically, <sighs> they fired uh, the guy who directed Fantastic Four. Oh. He was slated to do oh. a spinoff movie, oh but because that movie did so poorly, they basically <laughs> got rid of him. I still haven't so seen that poorly. Yeah, yeah. No but uh, basically the Han Solo movie, um, they released a casting shortlist, which obviously these are just, you don't know if this is the actual shortlist, this was just released through the press. Basically, a uh, uh, bunch of people like Miles Teller, Ansel Igort, Dave Franco, Jack Rayner, Scott Eastwood, who is actually Clint Eastwood's son, hmm. oh, Logan that. Lerman, he was like that I weird, that weird he was little on, uh, Fury, Fury, and he was in like the uh, the he was one on Noah, in the fantasy movies with like the Greek gods. What was that? Uh, oh, Percy Jackson. Yeah, he was in Percy Jackson. Oh, I've seen those. Um, Emery Cohen and Blake Jenner. So, hearing these names... Blake Jenner related Bruce. to Caitlyn? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I only know, like... Web. I only know four of these people. Some of these people are... I'm more like, no like idea. where are they from? Kind yeah. Of thing. Miles Teller was, was from, from the Dark. terrible Di- Fantastic He was in four. Divergent, right? Yeah, and he was in that Whiplash movie where he plays drums. Yeah. And obviously Dave Franco, you know Dave who he Franco, is. Yeah. Little Franco. I think that that would be great. I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> I would totally picture him, though, in the uh, Jump Street movies, though. And that's terrible, because I would just be picturing him I, lo- the whole time. I looked at a picture of Eastwood. What's it? That Scott Eastwood. I feel Eastwood. like he's a little too... He's a little too good-looking. <laughs> Dude's got a very... A very like more than Harrison but then, Ford? And I, told this, I told this to my wife. I'm like, I think he's too good-looking. But then she showed me a picture of Harrison Ford back in the day. And he, he's I, a good I, looking I forgot. Dude. He's, he's good a good-looking good looking You seen American Graffiti? Yeah, he was a... Pretty dapper dude. Good looking guy. So what's so, your uh, take on this being? Well, who who um, was Dave Franco? Is, is, do they have a character for him yet? This is to be Han Solo. These are the people to so play these young are Han Solo. All to be Han Solo. Yeah. They're gonna just cycle through them in the movie. One guy playing. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> like <laughs> this is twenty four year old. I'm Han really Solo. excited to see how they do it because I'm really skeptical at <laughs> this point, but. Yeah. Do you think anybody could honestly play Han Solo, or do you think this movie is just a bad idea? Yeah, I think people could play Han Solo. I mean, I. It's gonna be a young Han Solo. It's gonna be like way before what you know we saw in the original. It's Star supposed Wars to be movies, about like five right? five years before the original Star okay. Wars. Here, here's the thing, though. They have a chance to make him shoot first in every scene. <laughs> <laughs> There's a clause. That's the only reason yeah. why I could see them making that movie and be liking it. Be like, oh, hey, he shot my, that guy first. My question All is... All right, I'm good. There's, I, I there's an actor money. who was in a movie, I think it's called Age of Adeline or something like that, mm. with Blake Lively. I have heard this. My wife showed me a picture of this guy. He looks exactly like Harrison Ford, and I'm wondering why he... 
wasn't on this list. Because he also does. Uh, yeah, he's he played not a great actor. Because he played a young version of him in that yeah. movie. Yeah, he and he played, does. He played the young version yeah. of Harrison Ford. Because hmm. yeah, I've heard his name thrown around as well. There's also another name that's not on this list. Uh, the guy who was in Kingsman, the uh, main oh, character. Yeah. He's kind of been thrown the around. The younger dude? Yeah, he's kind yeah, of been thrown around. Know. Which, obviously, you'd have to get rid of the British accent, but... <laughs> yeah, it's like a round face. Yeah. Anybody stepping into the role of Han Solo is going to have a difficult time. Yeah. yeah. Harrison Ford is Han Solo. Han Solo is Harrison Ford. That's going to be, but it can be done difficult to But, I mean, if it's in Story. younger, like, there's some, there's some leeway. But, it yeah, is, you're right. But you can't... It's going to be difficult. You're, not you're definitely not going to do better. No. And no. there's way a ton of room for you to do worse. Mm. I don't know. I feel like if you're going to be skeptical about Harrison Ford, you have to like lounge back like this and be like, "No, I don't believe your magic." <laughs> I, just, uh, I don't know any of those main yeah. characters from that series. The hardest one to emulate is Han Solo. Well, I don't yeah. think so. I you don't want to see it. Leia the teenage years? I think that would be <laughs> easier. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't want to see that. But <laughs> just saying that would be <laughs> that would be easier. I mean, like uh, you're taking Han Solo is the most beloved, the most, yeah, I think. The, the most the yeah. most loved character of Star Wars and you're gonna try and bring someone up especially yeah. right after you just killed him. Right. But <laughs> Not really. Oh, so we're on spoilers. Not yeah, yeah. Oh, spoilers for a long time. If you watch yeah. this podcast and you haven't seen Star Wars, what the crap? <laughs> Should we just flip off the camera while we're at it? <laughs> Fuck you for not seeing it. Have you heard the, the cast list that's been confirmed for episode 8? I, it includes Harrison Ford. Right? Yeah, I saw that. And mm-hmm. so the possibility See, of maybe ghost. a flashback or something. Or he'll be like a force ghost? Force ghost. But no, he, I, a force he wouldn't be able he, to be a force ghost now. Theory. What if he know. did? Theory, and I want it recorded on video. The scene at the canteen with Moss, I feel like that they left out that the conversation intentionally and they'll cut back to that. The what's the deal with the girl? They have to give Ray's backstory at some point. It'll be in that movie. It'll be then flashing back to that scene. Wow, okay. Because okay. they didn't see that whole yeah. conversation as a, a viewer. We don't know how has, long they talked and what they Star talked Wars about. Has Star Wars ever had a flashback? Technically. Never. Technically, I mean, Ray's, Ray's vision. The prequel, Ray's, Ray's, gonna, Ray's vision, technically. Go. It showed her as a young child. It could be the future. A flashback. As her as a child, it was. Could be bold. Because they showed her getting left on Jakku. Could be presented in a different Episode one, way. two, and three are flashbacks. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> it was presented in a different way. It's not presented as, boom, here's mm-hmm. a flashback. It's presented no, I know. As, no, it gives you yeah. text to let you know it's a flashback. <laughs> they might they might do something similar, like I basically it has a vision about it, but they will never like do a direct flashback. Or like anything. flashback to Kylo Ren's life when his it's like Christmas Day. He wants his new lightsaber, but his dad doesn't get it. And that's when he goes off. To, he's like, "You ruined my life, Dad." Well, he's gonna shoot he goes off to out. Snoke, throws a hissy fit, becomes <laughs> the Kylo Ren we know today. What if Han Solo is just a normal ghost? No. What? The humble the Millennium Falcon's forever haunted. <laughs> like he won't leave it, you know. Oh, he couldn't keep he, track of it. He, Don't worry, Land- <laughs> Lando will come back and take it back. So Harrison. Oh, I want to see Lando so bad. Was this on IMDb that has him on the cast list? I don't remember where I read it, but interesting. But yeah, I saw it, that it too. Was yeah. Probably read it. <laughs> probably. <laughs> who, are, who are we kidding? All right, moving on from that, uh, we're going to be talking about a series of uh, merchandise-related things. Very interesting. Uh, so, <laughs> so first <laughs> off, uh, Mr. Zach here has a crazy piece of uh, merchandise-related news. Well, this week, the uh, anniversary for the, I think it was the Disney Parks deal where they had uh, the whatever Jubilee Star Wars thing. I'm obviously not as hip with it. Um, (laughs) But they had these onesies commemorating an anniversary and the buttons on them started coming off and there was a concern of them being a choking hazard and they were Darth Vader themed. Irony wins in this situation. A Darth Vader choking thing. For infants. For infants. Yeah, because, you know, choking affected his children, you know. (laughs) 
just likes but, to choke things. But I think that it's just statistically likely with how much merchandise is available for Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> and how much of it's out there, someone eventually is going to die from something Star Wars related or lose a hand. I really hope it's a hand losing because let's keep this irony rolling. Yeah. My question is, if someone loses a hand, will Disney pay to give them a robotic replacement? In fairness, Disney had no no business making that Star Wars themed meat slicer. I mean, <laughs> what? A Star Wars themed deli is going to open up? No. <laughs> That's a thing? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> it kind of slices in the shape of the, the Death Star makes, and the Millennium Falcon. It just makes lightsaber noises <laughs> and costs a lot of money. I, guess. I feel like you could, awesome. pitch, you could pitch that to Disney and they probably... You could pitch yeah. any product to Disney. <laughs> Do you know how many fruit roll-ups I've had that are forces themed? The red and blue on two different sides. <laughs> I guess for uh, those people that have uh, children, um, how do you feel about buying Star Wars things with possible choking hazards? Uh, I like the Star Wars idea. The choking hazard, not so much. You don't like the irony, even? Like, I oh. think the irony's hilarious, but I would rather have the irony kill someone else's kid. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather have I'd rather, let, me, let me back up. Wow. You don't have a great ER story? Come I'd, on. I'd rather have the irony kill no one's kids, but if it has to be someone's, I would rather have it not be mine. Uh, or anyone else in this room. So if it's his kid, he can never watch Star Wars again. I mean, my son. True. My son's name is Ben. Ben. Yeah. 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 He has to stay alive. Yeah. Yeah. Until he sacrifices. Just don't let him go like this, man. Whatever. Whatever happens, <laughs> like that, we'll see. He does throw tantrums too. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Right. Does anyone else have any uh, input on uh, this uh, great dilemma of uh, choking? I, I definitely appreciate the irony. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I thought it was a joke when I read the article. <laughs> I had to look it up on Google and be like, oh, poked. different news sources. All right, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> once, once I saw the ABC, I was like, okay. <laughs> Not the onion. Oh, man. All right. uh, speaking of merchandise, there's been a lot of outcry lately about Ray not being included in a lot of the toys and merchandise. Like, there was a six-pack of action figures at Target. She wasn't in it. There were two random stormtroopers and, you know, obviously all the main male characters, but no Rey. Star Wars Monopoly didn't have her in it. Very at Finn, Kylo Ren, Luke Skywalker, and Darth Vader, we'll no Rey. Fe- will now yeah. feature her. Now feature her. But do you guys feel like she was... Like purposely excluded, or do you think because of like potential spoilers of her becoming a Jedi, she was intentionally left out a lot of this early marketing? But I thought these larger, I, I if I'm mistaken, I thought these larger action figures were made after the movie came out. The yeah, the, the, pa- larger, the, like the, the pack of them the did. The two different stormtroopers. Yeah, the pack of them did come out because they basically released these. I actually have the Kylo Ren one that's in the box. <laughs> But, uh, uh, <laughs> don't mind me. Uh, Mid condition in the box. No, no, I, I have it out of the box. But basically, that was the size of the figures that's included in the six pack. They sell for like 50 bucks. But Ray being the main character, she's not in it. It's a little weird. And I go around because I'm weird and look at action figures quite a bit at stores. I never see Ray anything, honestly. I think it's really interesting. I think it sparked a whole lot of like deeper discussion in terms of like feminism and some sexism and whether it exists. I think honestly, it was just a marketing thing. I mean, you look at you look at like when the Avengers comes out. You see an Avengers act is Black is Black Widow in there? Well, no, no she's he's not. lame. <laughs> you see, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy comes out. Act, is Gamora in there? She's no. lame too. And I, so I, this is what I think is the thing is they're in their room, they're marketing, they're like, What's what's our focus group? Well, it's boys from age six on to ninety, whatever. But they couldn't compromise one of the stormtroopers. But this is what they are just looking like back historically, they just want to play with or look at action figures they can relate to, and that's usually male. But now I think what you're having is you're having guys go into or little boys or whoever's buying this stuff go into the store, pick up their their. <laughs> Jake's I, I, I was gonna say their focus group is age six to twelve, and I'm like, no, that's awesome. And then from twenty to forty-five. Yes. Yes. Um, 
You know, if, if, if someone went into the store and they're looking for their Guardians of the Galaxy action figure set, they're not picking up that thing and being like, where's Gamora? But they're going in the store now, they're picking up that action, and the first thing they're looking for, they're looking for their favorite characters, where's Rey? So I think the, the marketing, they thought it was going to be the same, that boys would only want to play with the male action figures, but this is, Rey's one of people's favorite characters, regardless of gender. Somehow they created a character unlike any other heroine that's ever been in a movie that crosses gender in terms of we relate to her, we want to, I was going to say, we want to play with her, but that's not true. We want the action figures, right? We want her on the t-shirts because she's awesome. And I don't know what it is about her. I think it has to do with her natural, just she's naturally just awesome. And we relate to her. And uh, so, yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with feminism. Maybe like... Does Disney worry about the whole, um, you know, Leia back in the day (laughs) (laughs) and her metal bikini kind of worried about crossing that boundary again? I know that came up quite a bit during that. They they were tired. Did you put Ray in a metal bikini? No, no. I think they're trying. No, I'm just saying they're trying to get away from that, right? Having it be sexualized in any way at all, just getting the female character out there. Carrie Fisher did say to Daisy Ridley, don't let them put you in yeah, a metal bikini. That was a pretty that big was, thing. Yeah. 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 And I, th- I thought that was a, a wise move. Of, you know, just give, lead her in the right direction. Don't lead Daisy Ridley into a path of when episode yeah. 8 is coming out, she's going behind the stage doing blow. Although, but anyway, back to topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the whole reason, I mean, not to be sexist in any way, but I feel like that's one of the key reasons that they made Ray be... Jedi of the movie, the main character of the movie, just to appeal to the female audience, and also like, I feel like a lot lately, like, Target and Walmart have been trying to encourage girls to play with Legos and do more, I don't know, more oh, typically you were gonna male, say boyish things, more eh? typically male things, and so I think that, like, why would all of a sudden they exclude Ray from the action figures, and it just seems like, uh, what? What were you thinking this whole time? Dumb marketing. <laughs> just bad marketing yeah. decisions. I did actually. It will change. I did actually yeah, see they're selling uh, Anakin's lightsaber now with a picture of Ray on it. Hmm. That was like the one, and I saw just the sole Ray figure that one time I yeah. showed you, and yeah. I was like, this is this the is only so one I've seen <laughs> for since Force Friday, yeah. since we went out. That's the only Ray figure I've seen since. The, November, basically. I, I was in the Wall Star Mart yeah. today at uh, Gretna, Nebraska. And. It's <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> Wait, come, what? Come find Wall us. Star Mart? <laughs> yeah, you know. It, it doesn't actually have a star, oh, it has okay. a very simple thing. Got I it. wish it was a Wall Star Mart. Anyway. Um, <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away? <laughs> I don't know. No. 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 In the, Logo used to have a star in the middle. Oh, okay. I thought it was like yeah. Star Wars pun. Okay, okay, it's an asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're shitting on things. No, um, I went there today to get antifreeze, and then I was in the Lego section because they put the toys before the automotive. And I had to look. And they had a bunch of the Ray Constructor action figures, which I hadn't seen those yet, which was pretty cool. Um, the Lego ones? Yeah, the yeah, Lego yeah. action figure deals, um, mm-hmm. which I thought that was cool that she was featured. It wasn't her with the lightsaber. It no. was her at the beginning of the movie in the mm-hmm. Jakku gear. Um, and then they restocked Ray Speeder. Uh, so I thought that was pretty sweet that they have those available, but Lego is kind of a weird company because, you know, back in the day they were very, you know, some boys will like to make, you know, houses because that's where their imagination takes them, and some girls will like to make astronaut stuff and go, you know, adventure and stuff. Now they have Lego girls, and it doesn't make sense. They have this weird brand identity issue that doesn't quite fit with their old values, but I saw a ton of girl f- action figures of Lego today that weren't marketed towards girls at all. They were just in the Star Wars section. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay. Um, but at the same time, it may have been that no one was buying them, and that's why there were yeah. so many there. But I'm pretty sure that they, yeah. they did a restart, because they had some new tags up. Yeah. Who knows how long they'll stay up, but they were... Cause yeah, it was the Lego, because basically a lot of the uh, outcry has been over Hasbro, which is over the main like, yeah. toy line of Star Wars, so... But I think it's a good thing. I think, you know, kind of like we were talking about in the past, whenever there's a heroine in a movie, the only reason a guy really gets interested is because they find them sexy. 
So they kind of become sexualized. So why do you keep sections. talking about Ray? <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, is it's like it's not that Ray Daisy Ridley's not attractive oh, she's because quite. she's she's a cute girl for sure. But that's when you watch it. That's not what jumps out at you. The other things, the the characteristics yeah. of a hero that jump out at you, and then you know it's compounded by the fact that she's not ugly. Okay. Um, <laughs> I want to challenge you with a question. And I think that's that's so much better than like. Oh, we, we kind of, the only reason we like Black Widow is because she wears tight leather when it's Scarlett Johansson. And the only reason we like Gamora is because she looks good. Or, you know, whatever. Can, can I challenge the room with a question? A ugly female hero in any movie or TV show other than Ugly Betty because that's in the damn title. She's not even ugly. No, I mean any... No, name anyone. <laughs> I and then, what I'm just saying. And then name any ugly male hero. There's some ugly male heroes out there oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, Rocky, man. dude. Sylvester Stallone's kind of an ugly dude. Yeah, no. No, our dad's but his face is weird. Hillary, Hillary <laughs> Swank in Million, Million Dollar Baby. Uh, she doesn't look her best. I haven't seen that movie. Can but I say Resident Evil? Who's ugly in Resident Evil? The, the lady. Mila Jovovich. You like, mean the one that was a former yeah, model like before like doing that movie? Crazy forehead! Yeah, yeah she's kind of weird looking. <laughs> yeah, fashion models can be weird looking. But, oh, she's not it's ugly, loophole. but she's weird. Okay, yeah. she's awkward. Yeah, no, I'm talking ugly, not weird. I, I don't know. That's You're going the on a loophole. Thing. That's the closest thing I can come up with. But I, I don't, I don't know if I would agree that like the makers of this new Star Wars movie consciously like tried to not make Ray sexy. I think it was just part of the story, right? She grows up on this desert planet. She's gonna be kind of dirty because she's on her own. She has the clothes of a person in the desert, and I think that's what was great. It was. It didn't feel like they were trying to make a social statement. It just felt like that was naturally who she was, so it was easier to, to accept it and easier to relate to her. And that's why I think boys and girls, male and female, are relating to her and wanting merchandise. Mm -hmm. I think that's just what they predicted from the first one, was you know, what they thought the boys would like, what the, what the toys would sell, and, yeah. and George Ray Lucas was a little creep. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they miscalculated yeah. it there. I'm sure they will soon rectify it. Yeah, it's one of the, as soon as one of the biggest ways they make, make money. money. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how they stay a global brand. brand. So uh, that's all it is. basically, moving on from merchandise, uh, we're actually going to go back and talk a little more about the Force Awakens. Uh, Logan here has actually been listening to the audiobook um, Very good. version. Highly recommend. And uh, there's some things that are in the book, obviously, that are not in the movie. Um, so we're gonna. He's going to kind of bring up some of the stuff, and we're just going to talk about kind of what was left out. Yeah, so I guess, my, do you want me to, like, straight up say things that happen? Yeah, you want me to kinda, yeah. Okay. and then we'll just kind of get. I'll preface it. If you go on Amazon, they have audiobook. You can sign up for a new account and get one credit for a free book. I don't know what I did. Got this book for free. A little over 10 <laughs> hours. Pretty good though. The guy who does the verse voiceover, he does different voices. His his Ray is kind of weird, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> does, a, does a pretty good. <laughs> his, his Ray and his Leia. I'm not sure if there's a correlation there, but does a pretty very good female voices for a man. Could I try to, to guess the level of badness that she likes here? You don't need to hold my hand for me to run. <laughs> That's pretty pretty close. Yes. <laughs> his C3PO is Han Solo are pretty pretty good though so um and i also kind of had to research a little bit like what is considered canon because there were some contradictions mm -hmm. between the book and the movie and i did find out that if there's contradictions the movie trumps mm -hmm. always um so do you want me to just tell you everything that's different or you just want just me to bring up like some, some highlights some, some highlights movie. maybe like some of the bigger things okay maybe. so one of the craziest things, there's a whole new scene with Unkar Plutt. Mm -hmm. So in Maz's cantina, Ray's watching Finn leave with those guys, right? In the movie, she goes straight down to the place where the lightsaber has her vision. In the book, all of a sudden she's sitting there watching Finn leave and she feels a hand on her shoulder. It's Unkar Plutt. He's tracked the Millennium Falcon to the, to the cantina and he's there to get it back. Uh, she raises her blaster up to his nose, tells him she's going to shoot him. He laughs at her a little bit, grabs the blast from her hand, takes the safety off. Then, craziest thing is Chewie shows up, taps Unkar Plutt on the shoulder. They have a little confrontation. Unkar Plutt grabs his arm where he's wounded, pisses Chewie off. <laughs> Tries to do it again. Chewie grabs his arm, 
rips it off and throws it across the room. <laughs> Somebody finally lost an arm. So my, I, I don't know if that's like, I mean, it there's no contradiction th- there because it didn't happen in the movie. Well, they're trying to balance fr- from the original movie's formula. Someone losing an arm in a cantina makes sense. Right, so I don't know if Uncar Putt will come back, but if he does, he yeah. might be without an arm if they stick to this. Very interesting. Ray's vision has some slight differences. So she sees Cloud City, right? And she actually then sees the battle take place between Luke and Darth Vader. Doesn't see faces, but interesting. She hears a voice say, and I quote, Stay here. I'll come back for you. I'll come back for you, sweetheart. I promise. So interesting. I think that might like debunk some of the theories that Kylo Ren left her there. I don't know if they're brothers, if you would refer to her as sweetheart. Not really a pet name I would ever use with all my sisters. So I think there's more of a parent relationship there, but who knows? Take this for what it what it's worth. Snoke accuses Kylo Ren of having compassion for Rey, and that's why he's unable to get the information from her when he interrogates her. Um, let's see. Oh, we talked about last time how we thought it was kind of weird how all of a sudden Ray knows how to do mind tricks. Mm-hmm. So the book kind of explains this a little bit. So she has that scene where she gets in Kylo Ren's head, right? And she realizes this, that she was able to get into his head. So when he leaves and she's there by herself, she thinks to herself, okay, I was able to get inside his head. He's incredibly trained. I need to get out of here. Maybe I can get inside some other people's head and you know, convince them to let me out. So I thought that was pretty cool to explain that made a little bit more sense um, on star killer base troopers find the millennium falcon and then there's this kind of weird scene where kylo ren comes and he sits in the pilot's chair of the millennium falcon uh, that'd be interesting that would right? be cool to see and in the he movie, says kind of. he says and i quote or the book says he was looking for something that might speak to him I don't know what that means, but I thought that was very, very interesting. It sounds like he's still trying to make that decision of uh, which side to turn to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. same as the, the platform scene. He, he would have, he would have, when he was younger, been in the Millennium Falcon, right? So, interesting yeah. scene there. Yeah. Um, there's an idea thrown around when Leia and, and Han are having a conversation back at the Rebels' base that Snoke had actually been watching Kylo Ren from the time he was young. And like manipulating him I towards the dark that. side, and she doesn't go into details of like when, but she knew this was taking place and didn't tell Han. Hmm. Don't know why. Very interesting. Um, Kylo Ren, after he kills Han Solo, the book says he expected it would make him stronger, but he is shocked to find out has actually made him weaker. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's just in the moment thing. Uh, I don't. Well. I don't getting know. shot in the belly. Well, that hadn't well, happened yet. Oh, this, this so he got right weak after, like right, right after before. Han Solo falls off, he drops to his knees oh. and says he's shocked to find out that he doesn't feel stronger, he actually feels weakened. I mean, that's kind of ties it's into evil. what we talked about last week. About <laughs> that he how might not be. even got shot in the first place. You know. Yeah. I think that's 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 so interesting. Um, the scene, one of my favorite scenes in the movie, where Ray gets the lightsaber instead of Kylo. Right after this happens, Kylo turns to her and says, It is you. Nothing else. Very interesting. Um, God damn it, there goes my week. <laughs> Ten and a half hours, <laughs> I just listened to it at work. You know, most of it is kind of just a repeat of the movie, yeah. so you can kind of tune it out and then tune in when something new happens. Yeah. Um, it was interesting during the fight with Kylo Ren. It made her made it sound like Ray didn't really know that the Force was being used during their fight. So there's that scene right where she's hanging over the crack that's just been created in the Earth, and he tells her, "I can teach you in the ways of the Force." The book says something along the lines of, "The Force? That's what this is all about." And then she closes her eyes, channels the Force, and then kicks his trash. So I thought that was. I don't know. Some of these things you might not find as interesting as I did, but I thought it was. <laughs> and then this to me was the most interesting thing. She has defeated Kylo Ren. He's on the ground. She's contemplating killing him. And then all of a sudden, she hears the voice of Snoke in her head say, Kill him. Mm. God damn it. 
The only reason I know it was Snoke is because, like I said, the dude who's narrating yeah. it uses voices, and he was definitely using Snoke's voice. So, interesting stuff. There's some other things. Like, you, you, you get a lot more of Leia's thoughts. There's some more of her in there. Um, Ray actually, for a moment, almost does sell BB-8. And Carplet offers her 60 portions, and she says, what about 100? And he's like, all right. But then he says something along the lines of, finally, you're doing something to please me, and that really disgusts her. And then she's like, no, I'm not going to do it. Hmm. Hmm? So. I don't know. I, I had also worth heard. Worth some time. Yeah, I had also heard or read about the uh, the whole Snoke watching from the, the young age thing. And yeah. That, it was, for some reason, that was the thing that stuck that with me the most. talked to about how he's, he's been watching throughout the whole, I mean, the Empire, yeah. the Republic, he's been watching. Who knows what he's been doing, but he's been watching. Or how close he was, or... I also read this somebody. theory, and it's interesting. If Snoke is Plagueis, I read a theory, people are saying that Plagueis might be the reason why Anakin was created. Yeah, they're yeah. saying... If he's he able to manipulate the Force, possibly, yeah. he was the reason why Anakin both got pregnant. And that may be that it happened to with we don't know. I, I feel like if that is the situation, Crazy. they will never explain it outright. Yeah, how would I don't know? Because how they would do Plague, Plagueis was just like, how much you know subtext can we throw into Episode Three? You know, oh, <laughs> you know, my master cheated death and I killed him. That's pretty much the Plagueis story. <laughs> well, they were, they wrote a whole cheating. novel about him actually. Yeah, but, but yeah. we can essentially throw the novel. No, out yeah, it's part of That's legends part of the, now. Yeah, yeah. It's part of the not old. canon anymore. Uh, what I don't understand is you said that she doesn't realize the force is there until they're at the crack. Well, I think because I feel like the force is this new thing to her. Like when she does the mind trick, she, I think she realizes she's doing the force, but she doesn't know she's doing a Jedi mind trick. But how how she knew who like Luke and Han were? And how do you like hear these stories as a child and they don't like mention the force at all? No, I think she so, knows it's there, but she, she doesn't, doesn't know when it's used, used, how it's used. It's just a bunch of stories to her. You know, it, it's episode four. Well, I mean, she knew it was true, though. It's not like a story, because she's, you know. Okay, but <laughs> context from episodes one through three, we know it's shit in your blood. Four through <laughs> six. <laughs> Yeah, midichlorians. midichlorians. Oh, just <laughs> your blood. I was like, shit in your blood. I, thought, I was taking that very literally. No, uh, no, I'm not talking about like shit in your blood or blood in your shit. Um, I really, I'm the, the vulgar worst. person for this episode. Aren't it's okay. It's okay, um, dude. You just took this. But, but so we, we know <laughs> we just passed the threshold. <laughs> we know episode seven's really trying to emulate the original trilogy. Yeah, yeah. But we have subtext that we got from episodes one through three. So she's probably loaded with them midichlorians. But it's still that mysterious force, the kind that she's heard stories about, but really doesn't tap into until she well, is talking to Daniel Craig. <laughs> <laughs> or getting into minds before talking to Daniel Craig. Rather. Daniel Craig Daniel can unleash Sorry. feelings in... JB007. <laughs> she does say that she, she thought Luke Skywalker was a myth, mm -hmm. so... Hmm. Some of these things might be. Well, and Han alludes to all the stories you know that you've heard, so it's yeah. assumed that there's more and more tall so, tales. Some interesting things. They also, I, I found it interesting. They kind of explain Star Killer Base and how it works. A little better. Apparently, <laughs> it harnesses dark energy and contains it in the oscillator, and that's what then shoots out in the galaxy. Yeah. I don't understand exactly what that means, and they kind of got really technical in the book mm -hmm. about so some of this stuff. The sun. Like gives so off yeah, like basically like, like the, the dark, dark energy, like the yeah. dark matter, basically, which is like. Yes. Yeah. Do they explain if it turns <laughs> into a sun afterwards or a star? Because it essentially they, they call the it. They say it becomes binary. That's hmm. all they say. And I looked up like what that means. Because I was reading in the. Uh, it just becomes. Yeah. I, I would it assume. Becomes two pieces? The, I don't know. The way they show it in the film, you just see it turn to light and they kind of turn away to see everyone zip away. But that, that was my understanding. The reason they were blowing up this oscillator is because that's what was containing the dark matter. And mm -hmm. they figured if they could, you know, make it so it didn't contain it anymore, that it would then consume the planet. And I infer it essentially become a star again yeah. right? what it was before so see I think it'd be appropriate for it to turn into a star because finally a star is actually involved in Star Wars it's been in the title for six movies finally episode seven gets it right and includes a star 
It's always there at the beginning yeah. behind the letters. Oh, and they're always there in the background, but come on, you don't name something after the background character. George yeah. Lucas. <laughs> so I was actually reading the visual dictionary, which is awesome. You should all pick it up, definitely. Uh, if you like useless you endorsements, like if you endorse Amazon, if you like useless information that. like I do, that's Star our royalties coming in. <laughs> you can show the cover, but you can't show any of the inside pages because of copyright. But uh, <laughs> um, you can blur it. Or You've got the video back. editing. But uh, I was reading in that about Star Killer Base, and the interesting thing they say about it is because it was a planet that basically the First Order went after because it had a high. Um, concentration of crystals because it it because that and the death star they now say are basically made of kyber crystals which are in you know lightsabers so it's the same type of energy that's in a lightsaber but they're doing it on such a mass scale that basically they are using it as a laser so third question yeah <laughs> it shoots a red blast that means it's a synthetic crystal it's a red crystal no, it's a synthetic. Because yeah, they they because basically they they all down. all the Sith crystals basically say are synthetically made. That's why they appear red. But I don't know about Kylo Ren's because it's a cracked crystal. But yeah, it's one of the more raw ones. Yeah, like, there's the the ones that are actually compressed, and then there's the ones that are more fragile. Yeah. I can't remember which uh, visual book that actually explains the lightsaber building process, but yeah. yeah. Um, the compressed or artificial crystals, if they change wielders, those are the ones that'll go yellow. Mm -hmm. huh. One other thing in the book, we talked about it last week, I asked if uh, Rey had destroyed Kylo Ren's lightsaber. In the book it says she does make contact with the hilt of his lightsaber. Not sure if that will completely yeah. incapacitate it and might have needed a new lightsaber, but yeah. they mentioned it. Okay. I could see them getting rid of the T-saber. Mm, no. Not completely. If, if, they do, if it does yeah. destroy, there will be a new one. Because yeah. I've heard That's rumblings just, that there is one of the uh, newer novels, basically, on the black market, uh, they put Oof. Darth Vader's lightsaber in this book. So do you think it's possible that Kylo Ren will actually ever get a hold of Darth Vader's actual I, lightsaber? So I, per I personally think he'll have a new lightsaber. New lightsaber? I think, you know, they've done that. Like, it's out there now. People are going to want to buy that toy. Like, they, it's done its job. Yeah. Let's move on. I, I could see him I making a replica. I think he'll have it, though, at the beginning. At yeah, least. It's, it's, Maybe at some point. I think he'll be, I think he might be, like, a little bit more of a clean fighting style Right now he's kind of just away. like strong. I don't know. Right away, I, don't think. I don't know. That's all speculation. Yeah. All right. We will see. Yeah. So definitely pick up if you want to know the grand details. Definitely listen to the audio book. Yeah. Logan has, you know, he's vouched for it. Definitely. It, uh, so it impacted my productivity at work a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anytime <laughs> I, was, I, was like, I pretended to look at the screen, but I was really just. <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. So basically, uh, it's worth it just to hear this yeah. dude's Ray impression. It's bad. <laughs> it almost made me hate Ray, but she's such oh a great character goodness. that I got through it. All right. Basically, moving on now. Next topic. <laughs> Please no. Yeah, this one is ridiculous because on the internet there has been on what's the main petition website that they do for change. change. on change.org. There's been a petition going around to bring back. I the wrote, mighty George I wrote, Lucas. I wrote it down. <laughs> to 20, direct episode 9. 24,388 supporters from when I checked today. Yeah. No. But it's the Jurassic yeah. World director. We know that he can take an old franchise and make something decent with yeah. it. Yeah. He'll never get it. Yeah, because no he's made no it very clear that he is done. Well, with yeah, obviously with the interview. Oh, he's not doing it now? Who? Oh, Lucas. No, no, no. I, I was, <laughs> no, no, no is still doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But basically, yeah, in recent interviews, George Lucas has said crazy things called Disney white slavers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, like, crazy things. Retracted. And he retracted it, you know, obviously. <laughs> then he, counted, he counted his billions of dollars back, and he's he like, oh, yeah, they gave me this. Retracted. <laughs> you know how many crisp? <laughs> 
plaid shirts yeah. he got with that doesn't, money. Doesn't well, Lucas, Lucas understand the internet? You can't retract yeah. anything. Well, he, he's one for hating corporate life. Star Wars, all the Star Wars technically are independent films because he used his own money, basically, to fund all of them. But do you think, overall in the grand scheme of things, would you have ever liked to see what George Lucas's vision for this new trilogy would have been? Or do you think it was best overall to hand it off to these new directors? I'd like to read his notes. I think that's as far as I'd go. Let's be honest, we would all watch anything that just had Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most likely. Uh, he, he had his chance. Yeah. If he would have done better with, or not done better, done commercially better with episodes one, two, and three, we wouldn't have had to wait so long for another Star Wars movie. That's not, just how it is. Not better. If he would have done okay, no, like I'm, average. And he sold like, it. You know, <laughs> the George Lucas, I think, is to a certain degree come to terms with the fact that he's not he's, right for this anymore. Yeah, he's, he compared it to breaking up with an ex. You don't go by and visit your ex while they're filming their movie. <laughs> yeah, he's he's had some. <laughs> no, he said <laughs> that. What he, kind of movie are they filming? <laughs> just any kind. George Lucas has said some crazy things since the movie came out, but he, they invited him. He went to the opening, right. and he seemed cool. He actually, it was hilarious. There was like, uh, there's a thing going around, uh, like a meme of him. Uh, the guy, the producer of Jurassic World, asked him like, "So, do you think uh, Star Wars is gonna uh, beat Jurassic World?" And like George Lucas just like turned it around and just like laughed at him. And then the meme is like, thug life. Because <laughs> George Lucas just gives him a look like, are you serious? It's Star Wars. <laughs> I didn't know we were asking rhetorical questions. Yeah. After after. I, he said something. Like, he straight. So it's now not what I have created. Yeah, he said something crazy to uh, the producer, and it's hilarious. I, I just imagine that Lucas, you know, he says his little diss in like a calm monotone. It's just like, and, and you can suck it in your movies. <laughs> just flicks his beard and walks out of the room. Yeah. What do you think? Would you have liked to see a d more George Lucasness? No. Yeah. No. That, that's my answer. No. No. <laughs> no I, I, went, I went and I read the little petition and made a very conscious decision to not sign it. Yeah. No, I would never sign it. But Even though if, Chrome allowed me to autofill, so it wouldn't have taken that much time, <laughs> I still yeah. took the time to delete all my information out of there and back out as mm. fast as I could. Do you know what you should have signed it as? You should have signed it as Jar Jar <laughs> and said, Misa, like this idea. <laughs> Misa, like it very much. <laughs> Meet someone a brother. <laughs> oh man! Obviously, yeah. Uh, this was just a ridiculous thing. Twenty thousand people does not trump the probably millions and millions of people that would be against him coming back. So <laughs> it would never happen. So. If, it, if it happened, I don't know. Not that the petition would whatever. Actually, unless they wait anyway. unless they but so badly screw up episode eight that it's just terrible. But I doubt well, that would so. ever I think happen. That would cause the wars. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I have faith in, in the people involved. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited for episode eight. Having yeah. uh, Brian Johnson, the director from Looper. Mm -hmm. Looper, I think, was one of the more fresher takes on a sci-fi movie of the past ten years, and I'm really excited to see what he does with episode yeah. eight. I think it'll be a little darker. And darker, that's what I yeah. want. I want me another Empire Strikes Back. I think, that, I think that's what needs to happen next. It just naturally feels yeah. like it'll be darker. Force Awakens was a cold crap, crap you know? definitely. So. With Kyle the Force has awakened, now it's time yeah. for it to, yeah. Yeah, to get pushed back. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to also see what they do in terms of throwbacks to, you know, Empire. If they're going to make it, you know, a, a companion movie like they kind of did with episode 7 being kind of companion movie to episode 4 uh, are we going to be a spaceship inside of a giant monster again are we mm -hmm. going to be on a nice planet and have to chop open a monster to keep warm like I'm sorry not monster pretty much equivalent of a space horse yeah a space horse tom tom First, the first scene just going to be Leonardo DiCaprio climbing into a tom tom oh, that'd be great <laughs> And he actually did it in real life. And he would actually get an Oscar for that. Just well, for did you that. hear he was offered Anakin Skywalker? By I him? read that. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid uh, reading that and thinking, because at that time it was a time where, you know, it was the 90s. You hated Leonardo DiCaprio a little bit for 
the Titanic, and you're like, yeah, Titanic guy's gonna get slashed up. <laughs> that's that's the first yeah. thing I thought as a kid. I was like, yeah. yes, because <laughs> he never turned badass and, really till the departed. And then it ended up being Hayden Christensen. I was like, yeah, yeah I'm still happy with seeing that guy getting slashed up. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the what last the topic. <laughs> tangent. It's just tangent. <laughs> Moving on to the very last topic. And this, <laughs> kind of with the last one, we're kind of just going to do a fun, just overall Star Wars topic uh, to discuss, basically. Going to go around and share your very favorite moment out of any Star Wars movie. <laughs> there is a cat back there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, who wants to start this off? BB Brittany? You want yeah. to start this one off? Yeah, I'll start this off. Um, so, uh, I have two, technically, that I will throw out. Um, one... Favorite, Brittany. Favorite I'm sorry, I can't. She loves The I Force can't. Awakens, so... I can't. Um, I, I, have I, have two, to, so I, I have to throw out the, you know, little Ewoks, obviously. Just, uh, in general. <laughs> what? No, I was looking at the fly up there. There's a fly up there, dude. <laughs> Are you ignoring me? No, 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 no. I was in the fly. <laughs> and then um, the that's the that's the main one. And then yeah. um, I think Jake's ignoring my comment that I made to him um, at dinner tonight when I said my other favorite moment in The Force Awakens was the uh, little creature like. <laughs> yeah, when the BB-8 looks across the sands, it, the, in the visual dictionary, it calls it like a night, it's like a night crawler, like a sandworm, and he like pops up and, <laughs> she loves that part. <laughs> he says, he says, he says, he says little. Yeah, it did. Like the, I want to know, I want to know what that thing is saying. Yeah. It's like, son of a bitch, you woke me up, you stupid rolling bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Subtitles. I thought that would be okay. Get sold. <laughs> it was silly. I like probably, that it was one. probably racist, so that's why they didn't. <laughs> racist towards robots? Yeah. Isn't that robotist? Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mogi one Kenobi. You can um, say two, I guess. I'll let you guys say two. Favorite no, my ones. my favorite one is Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So Luke has, you know, taken on his his dad. And the Emperor is trying to to influence him to kill him. Yeah. And then he you know turns off his lightsaber and says that that line that just gives me chills. I'm a Jedi like my father before me. God, I was gonna say. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I, as a kid. I, as a kid, I love that, and I think mm-hmm. that was probably what solidified like my love. But honestly, not a close second because I love that. But second would be I loved the moment when when Ray got that lightsaber. Yeah, that was just naturally. Although I read I read something where someone said like they wished that that lightsaber flies and then Luke's just standing there. Like how crazy would that have been? <laughs> Not sure if it would have been a better serve to the story. That would have been I like. Upset. I like. Would have been like. We've been looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> you just show, you just show up. <laughs> My friend just got slashed. Where were you before that happened? But I loved it. Like I mean, I, I, I really love Ray. I think she's a great, great character. Excited to see where she goes. And that moment, I think, was was great. Yeah. Kyle, what are uh, your favorite moment or moments from any <clears throat> Star Wars? I suppose I'll give two, but um, only because uh, are we talking favorite moment as we were initially enjoying it, or favorite moment looking back? Because either what, you, you know, get both. Why as not? a child, was was during the prequel trilogies and um, the fight between Qui Gon, Obi Wan, and Darth Maul. Yeah, was was yeah. one of my yeah, favorites. Pretty cool. yeah, looking pretty back, cool. that's still. Uh, it's not my top, but when when I was first experiencing it, um, and I, I guess um, just favorite overall would be, you know, the Han Solo, Leia, I love you, I know, sequence. <laughs> Uh, uh, just for a some reason, <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> yeah, there you go. There, that, yeah, the matching right mug is somewhere else. Right so there. that's the pillows that we, me and Heidi have. Or no, my wife got. That's that. when you. That's when you look at me like, that's true love. That, love that's when that. I looked at it and said, that's who's going to be my role model for the rest of my life. 
<laughs> that was a good moment. Exactly. Why are you wearing a vest? Um, <laughs> I look like a lad. Do you even vest? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, my favorite moment uh, was when I first remember seeing um, Star Wars was like all laid out, and that was when I was very young, probably six or seven, up in Minnesota when the re-releases came out and they did the special audio and the special visuals. We were watching the special audio remastered one, and um, it was like a time that we were all up visiting my grandparents and they had the best basement ever, fireplace, awesome coffee table brown console TV with a tape line where you couldn't sit in front of it. Just a very classy basement. Um, I've never seen that before ever. Oh, well, maybe it's a little old school. But uh, it was... Basically the line for the grandkids and yeah. touch my freaking well, that It was a good deal for Duck Hunt because you couldn't really cheat at that distance. Um, <laughs> you just go up to the screen? Yeah, because that's what you wanted to do. Be like, look at the high score I got. No, you cheated. Anyway, back to Star Wars. <laughs> So the first time we watched those, I remember it being like the first time that they actually stuck with me because I had seen all the movies before, but I was a little too incoherent and childlike to really take it in. And I remember the one that really captured my imagination was Empire Strikes Back because it was winter, then boom, let's start off with a with Hoth. I mean, that was like, oh, I look outside and I can imagine that in the movie and go outside and pretend it, and that was great. But I remember most of my family was in the room when there was the, you know, the climactic Cloud City scene. And me actually going like, wait, he's his what? He, you're hearing this? He's his father? <laughs> like, I was really, really shocked when I first heard that, especially being like a kid and being like, but he, he was just, he just took off his hand. Like, it was really confusing. Like, Dad, would you ever do that to me? <laughs> Is that normal? <laughs> But I, I just remember that part really sinking in, and, and that one was a memory I got to share with my grandparents who are no longer with me. So it's kind of like you think of moments where Star Wars brings you together with people, and, and that was one where we were all in the room, the fireplace was going, Star Wars was happening. Yeah. Nice. That is awesome. Star Wars brings America. people together. Oh. Yeah, it does. It does. You can, you know, talk to anybody and talk about Star Wars. <laughs> Lines the mood always. I'm a bit jealous because I I just cannot remember the first time that I found yeah, out that either. Vader was his father. I don't remember what that was actually like. Oh, you know so that version really. experience. I don't I think, remember it. I think for a month uh, to the rest of the year, I was going into the fan in one of our bedrooms. <laughs> of course, uh, it was just all fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was all Vader. Yeah, all yeah, 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 it was great. <laughs> I think Tommy Boy did that. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think that when I saw that, I was like, "Oh man, so did he's as mature as I was at six <laughs> and seven. <laughs> All right, Jacob. What's uh, yours? Well, as a child, my favorite scene. Strange, but I always love the part when Han slices open the tauntaun, shoves Luke in there, just like that whole Hoth sequence, basically. Of him getting captured by the Wampa. I was like, this guy's freaking crazy, crazy creature. All that part was awesome. My favorite part as a kid. But, like, looking back, reflecting over the whole thing, I'll probably say the same thing as Logan at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi. Basically, the whole end scene with Luke, the Emperor, and Darth Vader. When, like, Luke slices down his father, chops off his hand. He, like, looks at, you know, his own robotic hand. And that's like when he realizes the path he might the path, might yeah. Going down. If you go down the dark side, this is what's gonna happen. And he just he's just like, nope. He's well, like, I'd rather get electrocuted to death than rather you know follow down the dark side. Yeah. Well, and there's the real emotional part of seeing Vader looking at yeah. him, yeah, the lightning in his eyes, like that whole scene, man. Awesome. That's Good like Star Wars to me, right there. Yeah. Darth Vader brings balance to the Force. Once yeah. Because yeah, Which whatever that awesome. means. More like the Skywalker yeah, family. Yeah, not just there. screwing shit up for everybody balance. again. Maybe we should Pretty talk sure about that next. Scale. We'll talk about that next episode. We talked about a little. I we should really scale. talk about balance. <laughs> what does it actually mean? It doesn't. <laughs> so, I think two balance. equals two, right? But right. apparently. It's it's not. It's um, not that kind of. Mad speaking mad. of balance, I'm I'm pretty sure one of the names of the two new tables that came out just this week for uh, pinball effects mm -hmm. two yeah. and Zen pinball, 
it was Balance of the Force, and that's the one for like Finn and Rey, and it's set on Jakku, and it's got this cool sand scene for it. Mm. It's not my favorite of the two tables they put out for Force yeah. Awakens, because the design they did for the um, First Order table is fantastic. Like, out of uh, any pinball table in a video game of recent, it is one of my favorites, because it's got this great deal where it's just, it's designed really well. You're inside a sh starship hangar. So, like, the skill shot can be your ball getting sucked up into a tractor beam mm -hmm. on a separate ship, um, or hitting a soldier or something. I've never been able to get it. It's like one of the flame trooper units. Um, but it's got a multi-ball where it's a table inside the table where there's little flippers underneath, like there's a glass top on it, and you actually have to hit the ball into a lock position. And I know that sounds really boring, but it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> and another great thing about them is these Zen Pinball and the Pinball FX uh, 2 games, whenever they take a property, they never get the original voice actors. So it's like if you imagine a stunt double voicing the lines for them, it's like a fake Kylo Ren voice going, ball lock, and like the, <laughs> the helmet voice changer deal. <laughs> And, you know, Ray doesn't sound like Ray, Finn doesn't sound like Finn. It's pretty great, just because it's like the B-movie acting of the, the roles, but it's them shouting out pinball terms. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. They're pretty good. I, like I'd call it a buy. Yeah. yeah. It was five bucks yeah. for two tables. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely check out all the items we told you to buy. Because There's a lot of them. These companies are not paying <laughs> They're us. They're not paying us. us. So you know it's good. Uh, yeah. We're being honest. And Instead. so basically, this was the second episode of The Ways of the Force, and uh, I hope you uh, like what we do. Uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to our channel, like our videos, we and have a point uh, it's for boxes it's somewhere here. Uh, you Box. know, I don't know what you guys are doing, but uh, we're making boxes for you. <laughs> I, want a, I want a lightsaber. Can we do that later yeah, on? Yeah. A lightsaber, possibly. Right here. I'll, 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 I'll try and figure it out. Uh, <laughs> so basically, nothing, nothing's gonna happen. I'm gonna look like an idiot on this podcast. <laughs> Tune in for the next episode. <laughs> my arms in the we should have one hopefully soon for you. And uh, to everyone out there, may the force be with you. I like how your cat purred after you said it. <laughs>